Hey guys, in this video we're going to go over the spindle encoder ring, sensors, and sensor holder for the CNC conversion of the G0602. The reason uh, you'll want to have this feature is for RPM readout as well as for synchronized motion for threading. In Linux CNC, you can use a single sensor for the RPM readout, but you're not going to be able to get threads. And trust me, I have tried a million different setups, I've tried different electronics, I've tried different sensors and I just could not get it to work until I finally went with two sensors both of them going into the uh, CNC for PC C3 pulse index cards link in the description and the reason for that is those cards clean up your signal and give you really reliable pulses for your uh, for your breakout board so you'll need two of those and we're gonna go over those in a minute now I understand with Mach 3 you can use a single index pulse which in my case is this long pulse the other 60 pulses well that one counts as one of the 60 as well that's for the second sensor for the multi pulse and they are slightly out of phase you can see here the bracket that I designed specifically for the sensors that come with the C3 pulse index card so if you want to go that route uh, two of those cards and you can copy this mount this would be really I think good uh, I think you could 3d print this quite easily but I did mine on the mill and I'll show you that whole thing so the first thing we actually need to do is uh, remove the spanner nuts so we can get rid of this pulley because it's in the way now I know a lot of you aren't gonna like the way I'm doing this but I've done it at least probably two dozen times and it works just fine big crescent wrench on one of the jaws of the uh, chuck and then here I'm using a three-quarter inch to two inch adjustable spanner wrench but I used a pipe wrench for the longest time and it worked perfectly well uh, also the thing is is when you reassemble all of this you want to put a good amount of preload on the bearings or you're gonna get some uh, some rattling in your bearings and your spindle is not going to be super accurate. I have no idea what that preload should be. I never measured it. I just got it nice and tight and snug and it seemed to work fine. After removing the pulley, you can see this small hand belt, hand bent aluminum bracket that I made. And this is what's been holding my single sensor for a long time. And it's just terrible. It always falls off and I was just too lazy to make another one. Uh, I'm really excited to be getting rid of it. And then for this sensor, you're actually going to need to remove um, probably just the screw on the right if you use my bracket. The bracket that I'm about to show you is an older version and it doesn't have clearance to allow for that left side uh, screw. So that screw is not installed in my setup. Uh, this is the bracket, uh, as you can see, totally machined from aluminum, holding both of the sensors. Those are drilled and tapped 440 uh, screws, which are really common uh, in computer building. So I actually used 440 standoffs and screws uh, in a lot of my enclosure, so I happen to have them on hand. And also they're small enough to go through the, uh, the holes of the sensors. So you can see I've scribed a line just above the uh, this one screw. So that way I can basically get my sensor right back where I want it uh, quickly. And then here's that ring. Um, and we're going to watch footage of me making all of this uh, later on in the video. So that gear that's behind the encoder ring, we're just leaving that on as a spacer. Uh, it's not actually needed, but... Um, you have to have it on there or replace it with something else to get your pulley in the proper alignment. So it's just easier to leave that gear and remove the gear that it engages. And then you can see uh, snug up the sensor a little bit, get it aligned and lock it down. And we're in good shape. Right now I haven't clearanced the cover of the, the back of the lathe. So I have to leave it jammed open. That's why there's that rag sitting there. That way I can run the two sensor wires out the top. Eventually I'll just uh, drill a hole or cut a little notch in it or something. So I can carefully close the door around the uh, two wires without cutting them. Pulley goes back on and uh, the two spindle nuts go back on. And it's really that easy. It only takes a second to install this thing. Um, again, if you want to use a pipe wrench right here, you know, you're probably going to be fine uh, if you want to use spanner wrenches. If you're going to buy an adjustable spanner wrench, uh, the three quarter by two that I'm using is actually a little small for this job. I should have got a, a larger one. I bought two of these on eBay. I think I spent 10 bucks a piece, including shipping. Um, and I bought them just because I always run into these kinds of problems. Anyway, I'll uh, loop the wires up out of the way and install the, the belt, and we're finished. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is the breakout board, and in the bottom left corner are the two C3 pulse index cards, and then at the top center, the 
the two LEDs that are currently off on the right side, uh, you can see the, the row of five LEDs. The two on the right are the ones that will be turning on and off. And they're actually reversed, so they don't... The one on the right lines up with the bottom left C3 pulse index card. There you can see the multi-pulse. Uh, here you're about to see that there's the index pulse, and uh, that's how we know everything's working. So pretty simple to wire up. Doesn't cost a ton of money, and... Uh, I, I've been having really good results right away, so it's fantastic. I'm going to shut up and let you watch the machining. All right, so now that we've got everything assembled, uh, we're gonna go ahead and do some test threads. This is the first thread I've ever cut having the two sensors. Um, it did take a little bit of extra configuring in Linux CNC, but it was pretty simple because I kind of knew what I was doing. And um, on my very first thread, I had great success. I got a really awesome thread. Now it is cut way too deep and that's because I programmed it wrong, but Outside of it uh, not being a good fitting thread, it is a really good looking thread. For my threading tool, I'm using a hand ground piece of, uh, let's see, this is Rex, I believe, Rex 66, or one of the Rexes, and, um, you know, hand ground that myself, well, yeah, on the uh, bench grinder, and got a really, really solid result. Uh, result. So this is a 5 8 piece of 12L14, which is fantastic to thread. Easy to get good results here. And I've uh, cut the thread down to a 9 16 by 12. You can see how loose it is because I just, it's dimensionally wrong. But the uh, the threads look really good. And as evidence, here are some thread attempts that I did before hooking up the second sensor. You can see there's multiple starts because Linux CNC lost track of where it should be while doing the threading operation. And... Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. So uh, go ahead and uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.